Bringing a bow to a battle. Here's a look at the new McFarlane Toys Page Punchers Injustice Comic Green Arrow. It's been a hard-traveled road for the Emerald Archer, as this Earth's Oliver Queen gave his life in the fight against the regime. Now as an alternate Earth's Ollie steps in to honor that sacrifice, he will join his wife, Black Canary, in Batman's crusade to set things right. Now that we've opened up Oliver, the next thing we'll do is grab the tape measure. Actually, no, the next thing we'll do is thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did take the time to provide the sample of the brand new Injustice comic version of Oliver Queen. We can have a look at this review. Re resuming where we left off, though, we're going to measure the, the figure and see how tall he stands. Seven inches is technically up there. He's not quite seven inches. I'm going to say he's about six and three quarters of an inch tall, and that translates to a figure that's about 17 centimeters in height. Seeing as this is the second figure and all, we can then slide over the about-to-look-at Green Arrow and bring in the earlier-looked-at Batman, who actually I'm a bit surprised to see that Batman isn't as tall as Oliver Queen. Batman is actually shorter than the Green Arrow. And just to put him back to back so you guys can see that I'm not making this up. Yeah, Batman, if you look at him, if I can actually get him to stand, his ankles have become a little on the wobblier side. If you look at them, actually, the Batman, even with his points of his cowl, is still a shorter figure than Oliver Queen. Of course, when we look at the rest of the figures, as we will be looking at in upcoming reviews, we will also be bringing those figures in just to see if that continues to be the case. Trading card, comic book, and display stand were all the same things that came included with the Cape Crusader. Although in the case here of the Green Arrow, he comes with his namesake, a Green Arrow. Actually, jokingly, he comes with multiple Green Arrow or Arrows all sort of molded together. But let's look at, though, the things that he comes included with that were the same as Batman, the first of which being the trading card. I think, actually, when we looked at Batman, we looked at the comic book. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. The trading card will be, though, the same cover art that's actually on the front of the comic. As you can see, some really nice-looking artwork. It looks like Batman is, in this case, a giant, and everybody's sort of running away from Batman. On the back, though, and while this is the same as the Batman, the one thing it is different, actually, is the printing down below. Here's Batman's card. Here's Green Arrows, and obviously you can see the difference. One says Batman. And yes, you're very right. One says Green Arrow. Flip it around, though, to the back. Also, one thing that's different is his real name being Oliver Queen. And the paragraph read was also something that was very much different than when we looked at the Batman before. I'm going to move that to the side. The figure also comes in with a comic book. I'm going to do my best not to knock the figure over in the process. Yes, same comic book as Batman. I'm going to flip through, though, the pages. I did mention earlier in the Batman review, I did want to see this as a future figure. Boy, that... That Superman looks awesome. I hope we certainly do get that figure. And again, a couple of little references to not only Oliver Queen, but also Supergirl, a figure that we will be looking at in an upcoming review. Stay tuned for that. Nice overall artwork. I think I might have skimmed actually past this page. I did want to stop in this review, at least to show you guys the updated designs of there's Bane, there's Poison Ivy, there's Scarecrow, Solomon Grundy also as well, and even Cheetah. Ooh, I like the design. Although the one single visor for Black, Ma Black Manta seems a little out of place. I'm always so sort of more used to him with big, giant bug eyes. Anyways, yeah, nice looking comic. I, mean, I haven't yet had the chance to kind of rip, flip through that, read through the pages yet. But that will be something that I will do after this review. On to then the display stand. It's the same display stand, yes, that we've gotten already with Batman. I mean, I mean, how many times have we already gotten these display stands? But they're good. They're helpful. They're there when you need them. A little display stand also does have, I say a little display stand, it's normal size display stand, has the little DC logo printed down below, and of course, one single peg. It's the exact same. Why are we even committing the time to do this in the review? Same, same one as we always get with these other figures. Okay, so the thing that comes unique with Green Arrow is, of course, his Green Arrows. What's rather interesting, though, is that they're inside the quiver, but they're not actually permanently attached to the quiver. You can remove the green arrows. In fact, you probably already saw at the beginning of the review that these were separate out of the tray, and this the uh, the quiver was actually a separate piece as well. The quiver plugs onto the back, as you probably would have guessed it, by a peg. Just simply grab the figure, and located here on the back is a, a very conveniently placed hole that makes a weird sound like a haunting forest when we plug that into place. Haunting forest. The arrows, on the other hand, though, are literally arrows, and they're all molded together. Kind of, I really have to question why they would have even taken that time to make these separate. 
yeah, if you had one of them, yeah, if you had two of them, it would have made then perfect sense that these would have been molded differently. But to all sort of mold them together like a stack of matches, I mean, obviously, if you're going to want to have the figure displayed, I guess maybe the real reason why they had them all kept together is that you have the option either having the figure displayed with the arrows in the quiver, or you could just pretend like green arrows run out of arrows. I still think that they probably should have included at least one lone arrow to be displayed in the figure's hands. Unlike Batman, actually, in this case, Oliver Queen does come included with gripping hands, whereas Batman, we only remember having a closed punching fist, and then the other gripping hand was the thing that had to accommodate two batarangs. Oliver Queen can actually balance to have both accessories, even though he's not going to be carrying around a big bunch of arrows like this, but at least he does have the available means to hold the bow. I'm going to lodge that in place, and actually, if you have it far enough in, it survives the blizzard test. Somebody had asked me what the blizzard test actually was. Was it a, a weather condition? No, it wasn't. A Dairy Queen, if you have a Dairy Queen in your local area, is an ice cream place. They sell delicious treats. They also sell actually hamburgers and other things, depending on which Dairy Queen you go to. But back in the day, and I don't think they even do it anymore, or they probably do it, but they do it behind the counter. Back in the day, they would make themselves the blizzard. The blizzard was essentially ice cream, and then your choice of topping that they would blend all in there. To show you how thick the ice cream was, they would literally then take the ice cream and dump it over top of the poor toddler that's just below it. Sooner or later, you got to imagine that the ice cream was so soft that it probably fell on one poor kid's face one day, and that kid started crying. I don't think they do it anymore. Why did we go off and tar start talking about blizzards? Oh, right, yeah, because the arrows you can tip it upside down. Okay. He does come also included with his bow. The bow does not have a real string. In fact, the string that they actually put here is molded to the rest of the bow. And that's fine. I don't expect them to put a real working string on there. I mean, if he doesn't have an arrow, why would he have to have a working bow? The bow does attach into his hands, and at least you have two to choose from. Simply just take the bow, wide the hands, of course, away from the grip. Well, wide the hands away from the palm, and then just fit the bow in his hands, and he holds it perfectly fine. You could twist it if you want, if you want to have him displayed like that. You could also, as I did in the beginning of this review, angle the arm with the benefit of having two, uh, two hinge joints in the elbows. You can pretend as if Green Arrow is pulling back to pull in a bow, an arrow, I should say, out of his quiver. Unfortunately, though, one downside is the way they've actually placed the shoulder pads. I guess that could be the first thing we talk about. The shoulder pads are attached by the tops of his shoulders. They're not attached to his body. And what it does mean, though, is when you rotate his arm back, the shoulder pad unfortunately goes and ends up finding its place in his armpit instead of staying up here. It's unfortunate, but then I have to think to myself, well, if the, if the shoulder pad was attached here, I wouldn't be able to do then this. So it's a mild sacrifice that one has to make in order to accommodate him pulling back and grabbing an arrow out of his quiver. It means, unfortunately, his shoulder pad is going to end up somewhere down in the armpit area. Moving on, though, to the figure's head sculpt. I do really like this one quite a lot. We don't really have a lot of green arrows. I mean, we have the one from the TV series, but I'm just trying to think of anything else that we've gotten from the DC multiverse line. I... Drawing a bit of a blank. Somebody, I'm sure, can let me know down below in the comments section. But i got to say, like, this is a good, modern-looking green arrow. Like the Batman we looked at before, I'm actually impressed to see that they took the time to paint the pupils. Look at those. Those normally would have just been tiny little dots of white. And yet, they actually did go in there and they painted the pupils. Unfortunately, though, the neck, as one thing I can certainly point out, while I was really impressed to see that they painted the pupils, unfortunately, the coloring of his face isn't quite jiving with the rest of the coloring that they used for the neck. I'm not really sure why. It likely would have been the case that they probably painted the face, and this probably was just a plastic color, and that's probably one of the reasons why it doesn't quite match. The mask does look good on him. This wider mask reminds me actually more of green, a green hornet, Green Hornet, not Green Arrow, but I do like the look of this. The hat is not removable. Uh, he does have, again, the little chin beard with mustache. Nicely sculpted face. I just wish that the coloring of the face matched closer to the coloring of the neck. As for the tunic that he wears, I believe this is called a tunic. You've got the darker green happening here, the lighter green in the middle. Some additional gold trim has been added also in there as well. Gold trim also finds its way to the top of the shoulders, the shoulder pads themselves. I don't know if I had already mentioned, are softer plastic. But check this out. If you look the figure on the side, or you look at it from the bottom here, this is where they've attached the shoulder pad. Now, I don't know how I feel about this, because they've molded it and attached it by the flesh tone plastic. Unfortunately, though, when you see it from the side, it looks like he's got a growth growing out the side of his arm. I wonder if they could have darkened it the same color as the green. But then I asked myself, would that have looked even worse by having a darker patch of green instead of skin tone? You guys can let, you know, let me know down below in the comments section. 
One thing also I didn't want to notice too, or did want to point out to you guys, is that his elbows, strangely, are a different color than the rest of his arms. At least it's close enough in color. It's not quite the, the departure that we get with the face and the neck, but that the arms look like they're probably using that same type of plastic color that they use then for the neck. And that's probably the reasoning why that the face looks so much warmer in, in color tones that while the rest of the body sort of has a more cold to the look, at least a, a skin tone, skin color, I should say. You got the nice little bands added there in the lighter green, darker green makes its way. It makes its presence known. Also, when you get down to the gloves, you got some additional gold happening there also as well. I mean, you get granted a lot of things that are missed, unfortunately, by having the quiver attached to the back. I just want to remove it here for a second. I like the idea, at least that you can remove this. I mean, obviously it's going to leave a big bullet hole wound on the back of his body, but it, I mean, obviously you're not probably going to be looking at the figure from the back of the body anyways. And this is honestly the easiest thing to do rather than actually just permanently attaching a quiver on the back. I, I mean, this is old school GI Joe that we're talking about. The way that these just plug onto the back of the figure's bodies do, does not bother me at all. The lighter and then the darker green actually stop right here. And then down below that, you get more of a kind of a straight stark black. Nice additional detailing that they've sculpted into the plastic itself. The boots themselves are much like the tunic, more of that darker forest green. The boots also do have articulation. So and one, of these, one of the problems that usually happens when you get to boots like this, if you have two parts to a boot where the top part then it sort of serves as a flap that goes over top of the shoe part of the boot, there usually is always this like a little lip of plastic. These ones are at least are high enough that it doesn't impede the articulation on the ankle. I mean, you can easily see how well I can move that up and down and how well I can actually ankle pivot that back and forth. I suppose while we are on the topic of articulation, uh, Green Arrow's head is on a ball joint, so you can rotate it all the way around. The head does look up. And of course, as always, does look down. I don't want to say as always. There might be the few times that it doesn't actually do that. The head does also move back and forth this way too. Shoulders do come out. And because again, where they've placed the shoulder pads further down here, more on again his tricep and less on his shoulder, it doesn't mean that there's any restrictions when it comes to moving his arms outward. You can take again those arms and rotate them all the way around. But again, as you're moving it, obviously having it back like this, it's going to change the direction, change the placement of the shoulder pad. It's going to look a little out of place, but I would much rather that than not being able to do, do this at all. The figure does have a bicep swivel. The figure does also have a double hinge on the elbow. And the hands also rotate, if I can get to them, rotate all the way around with a hinge back and forth. The upper torso is on a ball joint. So basically what it is, is this is a kind of a harder plastic, but there's a little bit of give in there. A little bit of give. You can squeeze it from the sides. Woohoo! Squeeze it from the sides. And he does have a ball joint that's basically happening underneath all that. The legs are on ratcheted joints, so you can split those out. You can take those legs and, yeah, move them forward. You can also move them back. The mild swivel just more from the way it was assembled in the factory, but because of that, you get a little bit of a swivel at the top of the thigh. Double hinge on the knee. Let's not drop the grouped arrows in the process. And the, uh, the boot part of the, well, I should say the top flap of the boot. This part is a continuation of the sculpt for the calf, so there's no articulation there. But like already mentioned, you can rotate at least the boots back and forth up and down. And again, they, they have put enough necessarily necessary clearance in there so you can easily move the feet up and down this way, back and forth this way. And the figure, though it wouldn't be impeded by the flap, does also have toe articulation as well. It is a nice looking green arrow. I mean, whatever problems I may have had with the figure are very small, minor nitpicks. Uh, like those nitpicks were as like, for example, the arrows being all one bunched group. Initially, I thought to myself, like, why wouldn't they have just sculpted the arrows as part of the quiver? But then I also realized, too, that some people might like the idea of actually uh, playing out scenes with their characters. A uh, green arrow doesn't always have an, un, you know, uh, just a... a Unlimited, unlimited. I was trying to, I was thinking, I'm trying to think of the word, an unlimited amount of arrows in his quiver. Sooner or later, the archman, the archer is going to run out of arrows. So I kind of do like the idea that you can remove the arrows if you wanted to. The coloring of his neck not quite jiving with the rest of the coloring of the face doesn't really bother me because, again, like the color is fairly high, anyways. So you're not really going to be able to see it as much. This, the sculpting, the detailing, and the paint that they put into this piece makes for a really nice looking figure. Again, I'm really actually honestly surprised. I'm just going to move over Green Arrow here and then bring back in the already looked at Batman. Again, I'm actually surprised that Batman is as not small because he was never really a small figure. He's about the same size as we already looked at with the DC Rebirth Batman. I was actually surprised that he is a little bit shorter than Oliver Queen. Now, you could chalk that up to the fact that Oliver Queen is also wearing his, himself the archer's hat. Maybe if not for that, the figures would be a little bit more closer and resembling the same size.
In the final looks of Injustice Green Arrow, one other thing I did want to point out was I noticed on his one hand, the one that's currently not holding the bow, that his fingers are sculpted in such a way that it looked like at one point they had intended to include a single arrow. For one reason or another, I don't even know. I'm just only speaking from looking at the sculpting of the hand and just making the assumption I could be completely wrong. But maybe at one point they had planned to release this guy with a single arrow and just decided not to, just by the way that the hand is sculpted. You could either, again, have this guy displayed with a, you know, just a bow in his hand with nothing in his other hand, or you can have him reaching back, looking as if he's pulling back out, pulling out an arrow. It's obviously not going to happen. If he's going to be pulling out one arrow, all the rest of the family is going to be going along with it. I might, though, save. I have somewhere in many one of my many totes. Good luck me trying to find it. I think I might actually have a green arrow figure. I don't even know who would have made it that had a couple of extra loose arrows. I'm going to see if I can find it. It's not probably going to be the same close color of green as what we get with this release, but I might end up just trying to find one that I can actually, for the temporary surface of putting it in his hand, at least give him at least uh, an arrow, something that looks like he's about to draw back the bow and actually fire something. What do you guys, though, think of Green Arrow? Not a bad-looking figure at all, really. I mean, so far, we're two for two, at least for my honest opinion. I mean, the Batman I really liked. I like the look of Green Arrow. And I hope the trend continues when we have a look at the rest of the other two figures. The other two figures being uh, Supergirl and the other one being Dr. Fate. Oh, I like the look of that, Dr. Fate. And again, we continue to also the trend of getting the exact same comic. Nothing does change between them. So if you are one that is careless with your comics, I'd like to think that you're not going to be. But if you are one that just leaves your comics around, let's see, even just say the dog gets to it. <laughs> If the dog happens to get to one comic, you'll be at least happy to know that if you pick up all the four figures, one gets damaged, you have still another three to fall back on. Don't let that number get down to one because then you're going to be, you know, you're going to be worrying about that one comic. But at least they do package all the same comic. And again, like the artwork is really good on this. I'm looking forward to sitting down after this review and just flipping through the pages, not only admiring the artwork, but admiring also the story that they managed to put in the pages in the first place. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did come through and provide the sample of the page Puncher's Injustice comic, Green Arrow. If you guys certainly enjoyed this video, I want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly on board to see both the Supergirl and the Dr. Fate, then make sure if you haven't already done so that, yes, you're hitting the subscribe button down below and that you're also as well turning on the bell notification. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.